Welcome to Question of the Month, ladies and gentlemen. We are back again and we are excited to have you with us. All right. Today's question is a very important question. I appreciate this question because I think a lot of people have this very question and they want an answer or they want some clarification. So let's not delay. The question is, how do I wait on God? How do I wait on God? All right. It's such a very um, personal question because everybody has a different reason of why they wait on God. I have a reason, you have a reason. So the question is, how do you do it? Because you hear it all the time in sermons and messages. You hear it everywhere in terms of the Christian kingdom, but you may not know if you're doing it right or if you're doing it at all. You may not know that it's even a thing. So how do I wait on God is the question. And I think it's a very important one for us to clarify on. So I think this has been overly complicated this specific uh, theme on waiting on God and how to do it. I think the simplicity of it um, has been missed and I think there is an effective way on how to do it according to how I believe God desires for us to do it so that it can be very profitable to his kingdom and also profitable to his child which is me and you. All right so I can see though why many people find it um, very challenging perhaps to wait on God um, it, because this present generation things are happening so fast you order something online two days later it's present sometimes the same day sometimes the next day so can you imagine waiting on God and it's taking a day two weeks three months one year four years and you're probably wondering how can I wait that long for something that I really need, at least you believe you need right now? All right, so let's tackle it. Let's look at what the Bible says about it. Let's look at this Bible verse, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29 to 31. If we can read it together, that would be beautiful. It says here, he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail or fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. It says here that those who shall wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. So the Bible verse here says the persons or the person who waits on God shall have strength. So waiting on God, waiting on the Lord equates to strength. Waiting on the Lord, not waiting on anything else. Waiting on the Lord equates to strength. So how do I wait or how do I um, do that, you ask? How do I wait on God to respond with an answer or wait on him to give me some direction i'll tell you what you don't do i'll tell you what you shouldn't do at least to start with you don't pause everything i've seen so many people say they're waiting on god and they literally pause their life they pause everything they say i'm not going to do anything until i hear from god i know a person who once told one of the people i know one pastor that i know that i'm waiting on god so i'm staying in my room until i hear from god they didn't go to work they didn't go um they didn't come to church they just paused their entire life to wait on god and that's not what god means when he says wait on him he doesn't mean pause everything and wait to hear a a voice come from heaven that says hey you i'm talking to you that's not what god is saying because that's not what the bible means when it says wait on god the word wait in or wait in this scripture specifically mean doesn't mean stop it means trust it means trust waiting on god means trust trust in God to come back with a response concerning what you're waiting on him for or what you have brought before him, what you have submitted to him. But in the meanwhile, you do what a waiter or a waitress does. 
What does a waiter and a waitress do? They serve. A waiter and a waitress comes to receive people's order. They don't just sit there and wait for you to think about what you want to order because what they normally do is they have multiple tables they have to serve. So if they were to wait for you to sit there and order all three um, uh, sectors of your m menu, your, your, your drink, your appetizer, and your, uh, your, your main meal and dessert, they will be there and they, will, they may miss out on what? The fact that there's other people that they have to serve. So waiting doesn't necessarily mean pause your life. In fact, it does not mean pause your life. Waiting actually means to still do what you need to be doing so that you can be a benefit to God's kingdom and to others. So what a waiter obviously does is they will ask you for a drink of choice and then they will go to other tables. So when they get your, your drink, then they will go to another table and then they will ask them for their drink or whatever they're on. And then they'll come back to you and say, are you ready for your appetizer? And then you will say yes or no. And if you are ready, they will ask for your appetizer. And then they'll go to another table and ask for them. And then they will come back to you for your main meal. And then you get the idea. They're not sitting there pausing their life to wait on you. They're serving all the other tables while um, they're waiting on God. Right? Uh, why? Because they may actually end up missing a tip. And you may be the one that gives the least of the tip. So multiple tips, even if it's all small here and there, it becomes a larger amount if they're serving others. They get blessed by others while serving others. So waiting on God means you keep serving God. You keep serving God's people. You keep serving in God's house. And while doing that, God will then respond with a tip. Do you get it? God will respond with a tip. God will respond, a.k.a. with an answered prayer. God will respond, a.k.a. with direction. So waiting is serving. Serving God, his kingdom serving, his people serving in his house. Stopping means people will miss out on you being a blessing to them. And you will also miss out on being blessed by them. Just like a waiter will miss out or a waitress will miss out on the tip um, or putting a smile on somebody else's face and them blessing them in return with either a kind word or a tip, right? So waiting means trusting God and believing God and keep praying, but also keep serving all in the areas that God has placed you in. And let me conclude with a story. A while back, my wife and I um, have been praying, you know, the Bible says, submit your ways to the Lord. And my wife and I submitted our plans to the Lord and said, God, a year from now or two years from now, this is what we are believing you for. We bring this before you. We declare, we fasted, we prayed, we said to God, this is what we want. And there was a specific date, specific time, um, specific um, request. Do you know, during that time, it took a year because we were looking a year ahead. We declared a year ahead. We prayed a year ahead. Um, and we asked God, this is what we want. This time next year, this is what we want. Do you know that almost to the exact time, God responded. But don't, before God responded... My wife and I have been serving. We're serving God's people. We're, we're working a job. We are serving our family. We're serving in God's house. We're promoting his kingdom. We're outreaching. We're doing service to the things that God has put before us. And we are blessing his house. We didn't just sit there and pause our life. Many people have gotten it wrong. You don't pause your life while waiting. You serve while waiting so that you can get a tip, direction, and answered prayer from God. So that's how you wait on God. That's how you respond to God. Why? Because what I have known of God to do is this. He always directs and uses people who are doing something. He never uses people who are still, people who are doing nothing. He uses people who are doing something. Think about it. Moses was being the prince of Egypt when God called him out 
Or if you want to go further, he was being a shepherd when God called him out. David was tending to the sheep when God called him out. Joshua was serving Moses when he called him out to lead after Moses, right? Peter was a fisherman. Matthew was a tax collector and accountant. Paul was serving as a Pharisee. Deborah was a judge of nations of a nation and she was a wife. Ruth was serving in her uncle's house, um, helping him out. They were all doing something while God was going to respond to whatever request they've made or have not made yet. They were waiting on God, but they were doing something. So you need to be doing something while waiting on God. You need to be serving like a waiter or a waitress does so that you can get your tip, your direction, your answered prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. If I were, I want to just pray with you before I let you go right? Because you may be struggling or challenged or encouraged to wait on God. And let's just say a quick prayer right now. Father, I just thank you for every person that is listening, that the person who's listening that is struggling to wait on you, may you give them that grace to understand what has been said and that they will move forward. You will find them a place to serve. You'll find them things to do that will cause them to serve in your house and in your kingdom as a whole. Lord, I thank you for their life, that you have spoken to them directly concerning what they have been looking for. This is an answered prayer from you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Please, 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 before we leave here, we just want you to support us by following us on our social media platforms. On our social media platforms, you can subscribe first to our YouTube channel right there where you can join us at 1 p.m. on Sunday Eastern Time. And then you can also follow us on Facebook and on Instagram where you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram, which is a blessing. Um, we have... Our Facebook page, ANFGC Cambridge. Our Instagram page, ANFGC Cambridge. And you would not miss it there. And you can contact us if you have any questions. If you're looking for a church, please use any of those platforms to communicate with us. And we know that you will be a blessing to us. And we will be a blessing to you. Please like, comment, and share this very um, thing that you're watching right now. Share it. Love it comment on it just get excited about it tell your friends put it on your platforms and let people be blessed by it we just want to say thank you for tuning in until next time god bless you god keep you and god cause his face to shine upon you thank you and see you soon